us and inhibits the intellectual higher ground of prior. No single one of us has the final word on any issue. We are all writers, traveler, travelers with a purpose, on a journey to find meaning in the life we live, and because our journey is our own. It possesses interesting work, it, it is to be respected. Who here has seen the product from the Right. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a awesome. majority of people. Yeah. Some people have seen the, the product before. For some of us, maybe it's been a little while. Here's a little refresher about how the product works, right? So you take the derivative of the first and multiply it by the, the second plus the you know second times the derivative of the first. What we're going to have you do today is, is really see if you can figure out and understand um, how this works, why this works, and get to the bottom of, a, of an actual explanation for a problem, a problem like this. You get 10 minutes. Each person gets to go find their own whiteboard throughout the building, find their own whiteboard, and try to solve this problem right here and explain why this works. Okay, so the key is not just getting us an answer, so we'd like an answer, but we'd also like an explanation as to how, as to how this works, why this works, and try to be as um, sort of visual and creative and um, really get to, the, get to the why of this problem. So, okay, interesting. Right, so then if you do f of or f prime of x times y, right? That's what we got. Thank you everybody for, for offering some, some ideas. Uh, why don't we share quickly amongst the group and see what kinds of ideas in terms of uh, you know, understanding the product rule in a different way that people came up with. Who wants to share first? I'll go first because mine's most like textbook and uninterested. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I first did the product rule. And then I did the definition of a derivative, mm -hmm. um, where you just like dish it out as a lot of algebra in the yeah. semester. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I was like, that's sad. So then I did, I like the power rule, so I like multiply it all out, and then just did the power rule. Got it. But uninteresting, very nasty. If you think too much, you Mm -hmm. um, cool. I mean, I was told to use the product rule, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Does anybody have any intuition? So, basically, how you should think about it is you're looking for a rate of change. Okay. Let's so you have a rate of change of, like, some multi multiplicative factor. Mm -hmm. Basically, these are both multiplying, and both these functions are both changing. It's sort of, like, some sort of linear function. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And, um... Basically, the rate of change of one is going to basically be scaled by the value of the other. And the rate of change of the other is going to be scaled by the value, like the value of the first. Okay. So then basically, you're basically adding both of those effects, and that's effectively how you get to the product rule. Could you show that on the board? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's basically when you multiply these together, you're basically going to end up with a rate of change that's sort of. I don't know if it's like it's impossible to do totally visually. Uh, 
Um, Can you explain what that is? I think it's basically going to come along to the, having sort of the visual insight to see that both the values and derivatives at every location are important. I don't know. If, I don't. I don't know if I can do it purely visually. This visual that we're going to try and let you guys kind of grapple with that, like Christian was saying, we don't really have an answer for quite mm -hmm, yet, mm -hmm. um, is if you were to look at, um, if you're going to make a rectangle that had a length, you know, it's a shaky rectangle, um, of cosine of f of x and g of x, and let's make x1 for this first instance, um, f1 is around 0.5, and um, obviously x1 squared is 1, so the area of this is 0.5. But when you add a tiny, like a tiny delta x to each of the like f of x, you get a slightly larger rectangle since the slope is still positive. Like we're just looking at like over here this area. Um, I guess that graph isn't right then. But still, um, you would get a slightly larger area, like this. And what we're asking you guys to look at for this next part, which will be pretty brief, so we can come back and talk about it pretty quickly, is how can you describe the growth of this rectangle in terms of like f of x and g of x? You know what we could do really quick? If you could just take two minutes and break off maybe e5 and e4 and just talk with each other before we share out maybe your ideas. It's sometimes it's easier to share with each other than in the large group. You're saying that it's First of all, it's like super small, so let's go a little smaller. We call it there on the actual math, and we'll just talk about that experience a little bit. Um, one of the questions I have is: did, did anybody play around with rectangles during when they were off on their own in their independent studies? The Probably not, right? The triangles. Oh, that's the interesting. Triangle. How did you guys feel working by yourselves? Was it normal for you? Probably pretty used to it, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's one of those things where it's like, if you knew how to do it, it was cool. If you didn't know how to do it, you're like, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. When uh, Christian first said, oh, like, let's share it as a group, nobody really talked yet, right? And then, like, we said, okay, let's share it in smaller groups. How did that feel, like, getting the ideas from other people? Either you felt more comfortable, like, bouncing off each other, it, it felt like the ideas were more legitimate. When I walked out, I was like, I really don't know if this is correct. But mm -hmm. then it turns out that my idea was right. But when I was in the smaller group, mm -hmm. I was able to see like instant feedback and like actually this is like my idea is something valid here. I saw what you did at all until <laughs> I explained it like six times. Um, yeah, I would say it was really helpful being in small groups. Um, because I was looking at this for a while and I was like, I hmm, wonder if anyone's going to get this. And then I turned and like, people in the group automatically got it. I was like, what the heck? I've been that person so many times. Yeah, but I mean, at this yeah, point, I think I'm going to be that, like, after going through Stanford for a while and having to work with like, a lot of groups, mm -hmm. I'm not used to being groups. I was like, oh, okay. Um, but it was really helpful to like hear different people say the same thing because mm -hmm. they explained it in a little different way, so I eventually got it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would be able to like now explain this. Mm -hmm. I 
Well, like, I guess the central idea is like, was most for most most of your classes like this formulaic? Like, here's the here's the function, or here's the the kind of formula. And, mm -hmm. Anybody like probably like most of their classes were like that. That was definitely mine. Yeah, I think most people are. I mean, having been in this class as well, it's definitely been an online process to work to actively engage and like synthesize and integrate like these different perspectives and to see like how they can shed more light on one another. When you approach now. Try to look at it in a different way. Try to think of it visually. Um, and honestly, that's going to help you gain a deeper understanding. As you said, now you can kind of explain it, whereas before you couldn't, right? So like, try to work with others. Um, but yeah, visual math is it's going to help you because to see it the way, like even that, that rectangle over there, how you explained it, like you could kind of, you couldn't really explain it very well with like the, the graph. As much as like in a different way you look then you're like, okay, look, I, I understand a little bit better. So the big the big takeaway that we want want you to bring away from today is that a lot of times in math, you know, you learn a formula and you have really no backing for it whatsoever, right? Um, or in, in related subjects as well. So we want you to A, question those assumptions, question those formulas, figure out like actually what's going on behind the surface, and then B, really give a, um, a cool, you know, intuitive and actually creative answer um, to, to that proof. Um, the, the class is really all about a concept of mathematical freedom and creativity, which are not words that are usually associated with math. It's usually considered, you know, sort of rigorous numbers and you just, you know, are computing. But math is so much more than computing, it really is about exploring. Right, so that's what we wanted to show you guys today. Uh, we wanted you to appreciate that there's a beauty in math that a lot of times goes underappreciated. Um, and hopefully you can bring some of these ideas towards uh, your own math experience in, in classes um, and, and beyond to, to you know, put these, some of these concepts to work.